thank you very much for coming. Um, I am trying to conclude this uh, day today uh, with uh, presenting you what uh, CID is attempting to do to uh, participate uh, in the uh, data development uh, of uh, economics and growth. So we think that the most important question of uh, this decade is on data. And uh, we think that in the development literature, we are not currently using nearly as much as we should. Uh, and so this is what CID wants to fix at. We want to wor work on the foundation of the development building. Uh, and s many of the fastest growing companies uh, today in the world, and definitely the ones that are shaping the progress of humanity, are data intensive companies. And here at CID, we have a simple task. We just want to add the entire world to the party. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, to do so, we want to we focus on understanding how the knowledge building looks like, and we inspect mainly three floors. Uh, the first one is how knowledge flows internationally between countries. The second one is what are the lessons we can learn inside the countries, and finally, we focus on what are the policy implications. Uh, to do so, we are helped by two big data players: uh, the quantity and the quality that these players collect every day. Uh, of data is, uh, represent a revolution in the economic literature. Uh, you have heard them speaking at events. They are MasterCard and Telefonica. MasterCard through their uh, Center for Inclusive Growth. So let's start with MasterCard. They help us with the first question, how does knowledge flows internationally? And credit card data answers to that. Um, we uh, are looking at corporate data credit cards. And many of you may have in your wallet right now a corporate issued credit card. And you are here offering your knowledge and assimilating the knowledge uh, that is offered by the people sitting at the table with you. So the movements of these cards are indeed movements of brains, ideas, and knowledge. So when you aggregate this at the global level, you have a map that allows you to understand how this knowledge flows internationally. And when you have a map, you have a way to know where you are and where you want to be. A map doesn't tell you how to go where you want to go. Therefore, CID decided to build something that is better than a map. We are actually building a way to tell you why people are traveling. And reasons are different for different countries. It may be equity in foreign establishments like in the UK. Uh, it may be trading partnership like in Saudi Arabia. Or it may be foreign greenfield investments like in Taiwan. So when you have this kind of map, you start uh, understanding how to improve your country. You can find a country that has a profile similar to you. For Kenya, Taiwan seems to be a good candidate. And you try to copy their best practices. So if uh, Taiwan is able to uh, attract so much knowledge by foreign investment, then maybe Kenya uh, has something to do also in that sector. And uh, this is a work where we are doing with uh, Frank Nefke and Danny Bahar. And with Anna Stansbury, we're also developing a way to understand whom to attract, which are the people that have the knowledge you can use. And the product space helps in this, in this task, because when you want to attract, you want to attract the people that are working in sectors that are connected to what you already know, because that's the knowledge it's more easily for you to exploit. You don't want to build a cathedral in the desert, because more than having a cool knowledge building, you want your knowledge to be useful and to be used. So there are many other things you can do with uh, international traveler's flows besides this one. One of the, the other projects we are in undertaking is about tourism. Tourism is a great export. For many countries, it's actually their first export. You can see here that there are large parts of the export baskets and single products for Zimbabwe and Spain. Well, for them, tourism will look larger than that. So, but tourism, it's hard to pin down. Uh, but with the data we have, is more easily to do. We can know uh, when, where, and which foreigners spend their money inside your country. You cannot paint a picture as accurate as this one without the unique data set MasterCard has. So let's uh, move now to the second question. What are the lessons we can learn inside the countries? And here we use uh, our partnership with Telefonica. We are using anonymized call metadata to paint the knowledge landscape of Colombia. And we are discovering that the country has its own knowledge departments. You can see the pic down here, where every square is a municipality, and they're connected to the municipalities they call. Uh, this is uh, actually one of the pictures that Jose used in his presentation. And these departments correlate only so slightly 
with the actual political boundaries in Colombia, but they matter so much more. In fact, we asked if these boundaries are able to explain the wage growth in Colombia for four years. And they seem to be able to do so, but in surprising in different ways. If you're a poor municipality in a rich state in Colombia, we see your wage growth, growth penalized. You're on a path of divergence. However, if you are a poor municipality, but you talk to rich ones, then we see the opposite. You are on a path of convergence. You grow faster than you are expected to. So our data, our preliminary results, seem to suggest that being in a rich knowledge state matters. So uh, how do you use this data and knowledge? Well, to do so, we decided to drill down, not at the country level, but at the city level. Uh, and we also look at mobility connections and not only at social ones. Uh, we can ask, for example, if a city like Bogota is really one city or is it many cities inside the same metropolitan area. And with the data, we are actually able to detect four different mobility districts that have a lot of movement inside them, but not so many across them. And these mobility districts matter because when you combine this information with economic activities, you are actually able to paint what is the map of the neighborhood potentials. Uh, we are answering the question, if I live here, how productive can I be? A lot in the green area, not so much in the red ones. So with this data, you can reshape how your city works. You can understand where the entrance barriers to productivity are, and you can destroy them. You remodel your public transportation for your city to be more inclusive. The people at the fringe of this uh, space have valuable skills and know-how, uh, but they are relegated in the formal sector by the commuting time and costs. So, OK, so now we have an answer for international knowledge flow using MasterCard data. And we also learned some lessons inside the country using uh, the Telefonica partnership. We are left with the last question. What are the policy implications? Because I described to you how the landscape of knowledge looks like. But to hike through it, you need also a lot of equipment. And governments provide part of this equipment. And some those do so in better ways than others. So we decided to unleash a data collector program on the web to understand what is the structure of the US uh, government. And the program, analyzing the web connection, returned us a picture of how the governmental functions are organized hierarchically. And we also know how each one of the 50 states is implementing this hierarchy and how uh, they are connecting to each other uh, and all this connection, how do they fit in the union. And we are discovering that the way these connections are shaped seem to be the result of two different factors, where a state is and how its productive structure looks like. Um, here we see the connection state by state. So, we want to understand if this connection, if the way a state expresses government on the web is related to how they perform the functions. Um, and we seem to find a positive answer. For instance, having your environmental agencies to talk with each other seems to work well to improve your environmental indicators as registered by the EPA. So worrying your organization when you see a positive feedback and rethinking them when you see a negative one is a direct consequence of this web investigation. So I hope I was able to convey to you the enthusiasm that CID uh, discovered in the usage of big data. And zooming out to gaze at the big picture, we start to realize how this knowledge building looks like. Uh, as our uh, knowledge grows, so does this building grows and our understanding of the world, development, and growth. And here's the punchline of my talk. Uh, the, the, the knowledge building grows with data, but the shape it takes is up to what we make with this data. And as CID, we decided to shape it with larger doors so we can ensure a more inclusive growth. Thank you very much.